Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Just a quick little channel update. Of course, my name is Bryce, if you are new here. First of all, I wanted to tell you guys a big, big thank you for all of the sweet birthday messages. Um, of course, it's my 40th birthday. I cannot believe. Actually, I can believe. You know, you think about time. Time flies. But then if you really sit down and take inventory over your life you're like you know what yeah i actually can believe i'm 40 so um what i'm grateful for is i'm grateful to be living in a timeline a time in our collective world where 40 is still young and i was uh Today is actually my birthday, and as I'm filming this, I had a few minutes. I had an awesome morning. I did a bar backslash dance class with Marnie Alton, and then I went on a long hike. It was beautiful outside, and when I was doing this dance class, I was like thinking about my body at 40 years old and how I think for so many generations before this one, 40 was considered like middle-aged, old, you were starting the aging process. But as I was taking this dance class, I was like sitting there thinking like, this is the best I've ever felt in my whole entire life. This is the most proud of my body that I have ever been in my whole entire life. This is the sexiest I have felt in my whole entire life. And Granted, I've always been a thinner person. I, My boyfriend laughs that it would literally take a miracle for me to get fat because I just, I'm just a small person, but a thin, not small, but a thin person. But with that being said, at, at 40, I've, I've, my, my body has just, I've worked so hard through Ashtanga and bar and all these things that I am proud of my shape at 40 years old. I love wearing a bikini i love wearing a sports bra i'm proud of my core strength I'm, I'm proud to be 40 years old and have a flat six pack and i love that i was actually scrolling through um instagram last night or through the or, sorry not instagram youtube the shorts that they're doing i was scrolling through some last night and i was looking at all these like fitness shorts of um they did one of, of women in their 30s, how fit they were, and in, in, in they're coming to the 40s, like how we're just in such an incredible time in our history where fitness is just so important to so many people and it's creating vitality for a collective group of people and that's so fucking amazing. And I just hope that you guys that are doing the shadow work challenge, you have dedicated time each day to take care of yourself are starting to feel that benefit too. Being proud of, of your body, being proud of everything that your body can do for you and how your body has the ability to shift and change. And, you know, we have this conditioned program of belief to think that, as the years go by, we get older and we start to deteriorate in health. And we're learning that's just not true because I guarantee you at 40 years old, I'm probably a lot stronger than a lot of 20-year-olds. I know that I'm stronger at 40 than I was at 20. I was born. I had so many health issues as a child. I was a frail child. I had a lot of health issues. We won't get into that. And I was just thinking about how miraculous it is that I started off in life, I mean, the day I was born, which is was February 4th, 1983, so 40 years to the day, my heart stopped. When my mother, when I was still in my mom's belly, when I was still in the womb and, and my mom was in labor, my heart, I flatlined. And I didn't know that about my birth until many years later. But the fact that I came into this world not the healthiest and i had all these health issues as a child I had multiple operations the fact that i had back surgery at 17 and the doctors told me that i will never play golf or do yoga and i ended up becoming the only female authorized teacher the only female i'm the only female in the state of georgia to be authorized to teach ashtanga yoga like how badass are our bodies you know and and it's it's just such a, a testament that the body is the shakti of the soul it's not just science right it's not just black and white we we are our bodies we have the ability to work with our bodies and our bodies can do so much for us and our bodies. I mean, how many times have we abused our bodies and our bodies still function for us?
The heart still beats. The colon still works. The kidneys still filter. When we are abusing the shit out of our body, it still continues to work for us. And so I wanted to express that. And I'm hoping that everybody doing the shadow work challenge, or even if you're not doing the shadow work challenge, if you just have a regular exercise routine, I've said this before, so many people use exercise again as a way to abuse. Why not use exercise as a way to celebrate? And that's what I felt this morning in Marnie Alton's class. I was like, my body has done so much for me and it can do, it's high performance. My level of physical fitness at 40 years old is very high. And my body serves me in that way. And I do the work. I work my body so that my body can be fed and so that my body can can function at such at such a high intensity and the my muscles can remain clean and lean and my body can have a, a sweat a filtering system of sweat to detox and i just really hope that that for you guys again who are doing the 60 day challenge that you're starting to feel that as well you're proud of yourself at 40 years old i know i've been saying like i still would perhaps like to have a baby and I kind of have a bit of a freak out because I am 40. But then I was thinking about it. I was like, but I'm showing no signs of menopause, like none. And if I can guess from my mother had a hysterectomy in her 30s, but knowing when she started to have hot flashes, I have about 15 years left before menopause hits. And my period, I know TMI, my period is very regular. And very healthy. And so I'm like, that means that my ovulation system is still very healthy at 40 years old. And so I just hope that, that for all of you guys out there, that you just take a moment to like venerate your body, especially if you are someone who has had children and like, what is harder than pushing a human being out of your body? All the exercises you're doing in the shadow work challenge are nothing compared to pushing a human being out of you. And I hope that you celebrate the fact that your body can do that. I hope you celebrate everything you've been through and for everyone, like any operations or surgeries or times in your life where you weren't proud of your body to start to shift that and realize what a beautiful machine, living, breathing machine you've been given. And I hope that for each and every one of you, that when bathing suit season comes around again, that you find that pride like I do, put those bikinis on. Feel proud of what your body looks like because you've earned that and your body is beautiful. And so I, I hope that I, you know, I hope that that, that resonates with you guys. And, I, and if you're not feeling that yet, keep going, keep pushing yourself because you will start to appreciate the things that your body can do. I mean, I think when I was 20, even when I was 30, I don't, I probably wasn't even a hundred pounds. I remember when I left Los Angeles, I was like 106 pounds. That was like my, and I don't weigh anymore, but at 40 years old, again, I, I feel better. I was telling my boyfriend this morning, like we were out hiking. I was like, my body just feels better. I feel better than I ever have before. I feel younger at 40 than I did at 30. And so I hope, I hope that vitality comes to you guys as well. And once again, I thank you so much for all of your kind, sweet birthday messages. Um, I was telling Emmy this morning, my early twenties, man, I would, we would party hard on birthdays. Right. But now that I'm in my forties, like I'm such a minimalist anyway, there's not a whole lot that I crave in life. Like I have a very small wardrobe. I have a very minimalist apartment. Like I, I just don't need a whole lot. And I know that's a lot of it has to do with my spiritual practice. I think that's common with people who take up a spiritual practice. They start to not really need the material things in life. You know, I would rather to use my money to travel. Right. And I was telling Emmy, I was like, I'm just so happy to like take a dance class on my birthday and go hiking and then go get dinner with friends and family and like come home and watch a movie. Like, I'm just so grateful for, for that in life. And so I hope that for all of you guys, you are starting to also find joy in the very simplest of things. One of my favorite quotes is, no matter where you go, there you are. So no matter whether you are very wealthy or very poor, you're still the same person. There you are. And so I hope that through the Shadow Work Challenge, you guys are really working through yourselves, getting to know yourselves, right? Getting to know yourselves and what your perceived limitations are and understanding that those are just perceived limitations. They're not real. You are 
so much powerful. I mean, a class I took this morning with Marnie Alton, she always says the greatest things. She said something about like, you know, think about the force it takes to stop a moving train. Think about the force it takes to stop a moving car. You have that force in you and greater and greater. You have more energy within your body than that of the energy it takes to stop a moving train. That's powerful. You're very powerful. And so I hope tomorrow, tomorrow, Sunday, fun day, I will do a, an update video soon this week on this, on the shadow work challenge. But I want to kind of talk about though, this upcoming week, because this is a pretty big week for my challenge, my, my channel. Um, we have some, hopefully some really awesome guests. Some of the guests, it's tentative because of their press junkets. Um, we have Monday, I will be releasing the final video on tablet three of the Emerald tablets on my channel. Of course, I will be on Aquarius Rising Africa at nine o'clock to go deeper into the Emerald tablets. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, normally I release the Hathor material and the Magdalene material. That for this week is not going to happen this week because I have some whistleblowers that are coming on my channel. And I'm so excited. So Tuesday, there's going to be an introduction video made by me on Yogi Bhajan and the Kundalini Yoga cult. Yes, you heard me correctly. Uh, because I'm all this week, I'm going to be speaking to a man called Gursant Singh, who was the author of this book, Confessions of an American Sikh, Locked Up in India, Corrupt Cops, and My Escape from the New Age Tantric Yoga Cult. And so I have been asked to cover the Kundalini Yoga Cult many times. And I have kind of backed away from covering it because of my proximity um, in the yoga world. But I decided that it's very important to talk about this because the Yogi Bhajan um, Kundalini Yoga Cult is not real. It's all made up. Okay. And Grant Singh has his own YouTube channel. I've actually been watching his channel for a while now before I even had my own YouTube channel because I've known about the Kundalini Yoga Cult for a very long time before I ever even thought I would be on YouTube. And so I've been very well aware of him as a whistleblower and what was going on with the Yogi Bhajan stuff. And so I reached out to him. I just got his book, so I've not had a chance to read it yet. I did. I reached out to him and he's going to be coming on my channel this week to speak about the uh, Yogi Bhajan yoga cult. And so uh, again, so important that we understand what coercive control is and and as I've said many times, the darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create. All the darkness can do is steal from the light and invert or try to mimic. And this is what we see with Yogi Bhajan and the Kundalini Yoga cult. We see an inversion of truth. And so as more and more people, especially you guys doing the, the Shadow Work Challenge, get deeper into discovering these paths of self-help or you know, uh, old text, I do feel at this point that it is my responsibility to really focus on what cult behavior looks like and what coercive control looks like. And I told, I, I spoke to Gersant on the phone last week um, to set up our, our, um, our interview on my channel. And I, I told him, um, you know, we've talked a lot about this, about um, how lucky I have been because I, I have been very fortunate in my uh, with teachers. I've always had very integral teachers who never crossed the line. And that doesn't mean that I haven't been in narcissistically abusive relationships. Yes, I have been in narcissistic narcissistically abusive relationships. And as many people know, a narcissistically abusive relationship is a cult of one. So I have been in that situation where I've been in a cult of one. Um, but not within the the spiritual world. And so we're going to be talking about that so that people have more of a, a education when it comes to like red flags, what to look out for when it comes to these types of organizations. The second person I'm going to be speaking to this week, hopefully, she is on a press, press tour right now, a press junket right now. So we tentatively have a time scheduled for her to come on my channel, but it depends on what her press junket looks like. So fingers crossed she will be able to make it this week. If not, we'll just, I told her it was no big deal. We would just reschedule when she can make it on is Kelly Teal from um, Nexium or Nixium, as, as I know a lot of people in the, and I actually ordered her book, but it got lost in the mail. So I have to, I have to reorder it. Um, but this is her book, Unapologetically Glorious. And she, um, she's been in some of the documentaries about Nexium. Um, and I wanted to kind of, I was going to surprise you guys with bringing her on the show. Uh, 
But I, I realized in speaking with some of our uh, viewers who are not in the United States or Canada, that some of you guys overseas uh, are not familiar with Nexium and what happened. And so um, I am not going to be doing an introductory video to Nexium like I am doing with Yogi Bhajan, simply because I am an outsider looking in when it comes to Nexium. I feel like I have more of a understanding with what happened with Yogi Bhajan because I have such an understanding of the yoga text. But um, I will say though, if you guys are from another country, um, I would highly suggest, and if, if you're from America or Canada, there are two really good documentaries to watch about Nexium. Um, this is The Vow, which is on HBO Max on the United States, HBO Max. Um, it's two seasons, season one, season two, The Vow, that's what it's called. And then there is Seduced, which I believe Seduced is on Amazon Prime. Uh, Kelly Teal is a huge part, the girl coming on my channel is a huge part of um, Seduced, that, that documentary. And so we're going to talk a lot about, uh, you know, what that looks like. I'm going to have her kind of introduce what Nexium was, uh, what it turned into. And of course, if you are in the United States, you know that Keith Raniere, the uh, head of Nexium, was arrested. God, maybe was it... Um, I'll have to look that up. It was a few years ago. He was arrested and charged with all sorts of like crazy stuff. I, I can't say the words on on YouTube, but um, he ended up serving. He he got found guilty and he is serving a 120 year prison sentence in a high security prison. Probably one of the most uh, dangerous cult leaders, I would guess to say, in our modern world. And um. Kelly can talk more about that. Kelly and I actually spoke on the phone for like two hours uh, about a week ago. She's awesome. Um, she herself, one thing I really like about her and why I wanted her to come on the channel is that I've often said that for me, myself, I'm a seeker. I think a lot of us, a lot of you guys watching right now are seekers. I don't like the word truther. I'm a seeker. And um, I think Kelly is that way too, from what I've seen of her other interviews in a lot of people that you, know, you look at things like Nexium. It was a, it was advertised as a self help group, and um, it it but it, it turned into a cult. And um, a lot of what Keith Raniere was stealing was legitimate practices in in, in self healing, but he was manipulating it and inverting it. And um, of course, you know, with a lot of these cults like uh, Scientology, these these um, even Yogi Bhajan, we'll talk about their turbans. A lot of cults have such distinct look. You know, they have like the uniforms, they have things that they wear that set them apart. But Nexium was different. Nexium, it was normal looking, very beautiful people that it wasn't sold as a religious thing. It was people that look like you and me. It was, um, it was just a self-help organization. Most of the people there were college graduates, university graduates, high levels of education. The Broffman sisters from Seagram's uh, Alcohol. Claire Broffman, I believe, is serving like an eight-year prison sentence because of her involvement. Um, they are the ones that were bankrolling Nexium, And so it's like that kind of shows you that this this coercive control can happen everywhere. You know, when you look at the Nexium people, it's like that can be your sister. That could be you. It's normal. Mark Vicente, there's a really great YouTube channel that Mark Vicente has. Um, I believe he was the person who did the, the documentary, What the Bleep Do We Know? Um, he was one of the original whistleblowers um, for, uh, he, he does a debriefing on the vow he watches the episodes and he goes and does like a podcast over watching it and living it he testified in keith ranieri's trial um, i would highly suggest watching uh subscribing to his youtube channel and watching some of his reactions because he's somebody i mean what the bleep do we know i know tamara has spoken a lot about that documentary that's a documentary that a lot of people loved it was kind of um, a groundbreaking about spirituality and the human mind and and the the bondage of thought and so for someone like him to get sucked into a cult that just shows you that none of us are free, you know, none of us, we all think, oh, I'll never fall for that. I'll never fall for that. But a lot of us fall for this stuff every single day and we just don't even know it. And so he, I love, I've been listening to his, um, 
I've watched the vow now twice in preparation for, um, for, uh, Kelly's interview. And so I will probably be watching seduced again as well. And I just love listening to his breakdown because I like listening to his journey of healing. And it's really helped me, you know, when we think about coercive control or mind control, I mean, I, I know so many people that are stuck in relationships or, you know, romantic or business relationships where they're stuck at the mercy of a malignant narcissist. And he talks about a lot about that. And he's actually, from what I understand, I just heard listening to one of his podcasts, he's in the middle of making um, another documentary about narcissism. Um, I think it's called something like uh, Empathy Not Included or something. Anyway, it's going to be coming out next year. But I'm really excited to see that documentary of his because narcissism is very fascinating. And, and there's different levels of narcissist uh, narcissism. Um, you know, the most dangerous, and he just said this, and I know that as well as a covert narcissist, but we do have malignant narcissism. Um, there's different ways in which the narcissists work, but a lot of cult leaders are obviously uh, on that spectrum of being a narcissist because they want to have that utter control over people in every aspect of their lives and what's been very healing for me even though i've gone through trauma therapy i've gone through a lot of therapy because of my experience with narcissists really looking at the narcissist from a cult leader's perspective and, and how they work and understanding that if you I, I know people again who are stuck in these situations and i can see it other people can see it other people can see that the relationship is not normal, that there's a lot of high control there and there's a lot of coercion and a lot of what they call the fog, which is fear, obligation, guilt. So, you know, I know I know of YouTubers that I love dearly whose channel is now dedicated really to like one specific guest because they think they're under the control, the puppeting of that guest. So they're like in a cult of one and their service is to that guest because for some reason they think that guest for whatever mind tricks, you know, mind fucking that person has done to them off camera, they think that that's the only reason why they have a career or they have substance. And it's, it's heartbreaking. One person in particular, I just want to shake them and be like, no, no, people watch your show because of you not because of your guest. Your guests are not a bonus, but I've watched this person's channel just crash and it's it's content and so much stuff that this person was going to do on his channel he's not doing now because he's subservient to this other guest. That is cult behavior. But what I've learned the most is that from these, and it's true, you can't, I've tried saying something, other people have tried saying something, but you really can't say anything until that person's ready to hear it because they're getting mind fucked. They're getting mind fucked all the time. They're getting lied to. They're being gaslit. They're being isolated from their, from other people. This person's been isolated from other guests, you know, and so their, their mind is so scrambled and they're, they're in the fog. Now they're in the fear obligation guilt. They're scared. They're, I know from my experiences with narcissists, you become a little bit afraid of them. You're afraid of their power. And then you feel obligated because for some reason, you've been fed to believe that, that they're your savior. And then you feel the guilt. Like you need to be subservient to them because for some reason, they're, they're your savior. It's all just a mind game. And that's why they have to isolate people. That's why cults isolate. That's why narcissists isolate. So, and this is not just, again, a romantic relationship. This could be a business partnership. This could be a friendship. These things are seen everywhere. And usually what they do, and they talk about this with Keith Raniere as well, is they find your weakness. So like if somebody has a problem with, um, you know, being confident, having self-confidence. And so the weakness then is the ego. And so they do things to love bomb and to stroke the ego until they have you in their clutches. And I've learned again that, that by watching, it's been reminding me, there's nothing any of us can do when we have friends or family or loved ones in this situation. And we see it for what it is. You can try to say something, but in the trauma bond that happens with the narcissist and the victim is that they end up running deeper to the abuser because they're trauma bonded to the abuser. And so you as the person that's really trying to help them, you see this a lot with India Oxenberg and her mother, Catherine, in the documentary seduced, you end up really hating the person that's trying to save you 
and seeing your abuser as the savior. And so the best thing we can do is put the information out and pray that our loved ones wake up. And once they do wake up, a lot of times there is fear of leaving because the abuser then has information about them. We're going to talk about with Nexium where they took collateral collateral. Um, and so I just think this is such an important conversation for us to have, especially going into a new timeline. We have to be very, you know, nar I, I was talking to Emmy. Emmy and I have, have both gone through major years of, of, of our own shadow work healing before we became friends. And so we have a, a lot of notes to compare. And I love how she quoted another person. I can't remember the name of the person that she quoted, but she was talking about like murderers are going to murder. Like that's just what they're going to do. That's what murderers do. They murder. Narcissists are going to narcissist empaths are going to empath we can't stop narcissists for abusing people we can't stop them from doing that all we can do is be aware that this exists self-govern and self-protect and so um yeah and even mark vicente talks about this with like even political parties that political parties do this all the time and what they're showing you in the beginning is a version of yourself they're mirroring you. Yeah. So anyway, um, I really, again, please, you guys, let me know any questions that you have for either Gersant Singh or uh, Kelly Teal regarding either the Yogi Bhajan Kundalini cult or Nexium. I have, um, I'm in communication with Mark Headley from Scientology. I have his book as well. I'm going to be getting back to him in a couple of weeks to see if we can plan something with him as well to talk about Scientology. Um, Cause it's fucking fascinating. Cause L Ron Hubbard, I mean, all these guys and there's many different levels, right? Like I look at L Ron Hubbard and we can ask Mark, uh, Mark Headley about this. I believe L Ron Hubbard actually believed his shit. I don't think David Miscavige does, but I think L Ron Hubbard did. Keith Raniere on the other hand, I think he knew the whole time he was fucking with people. And so there's different levels of, of these control. I don't, it's very fascinating. Um, and so, but again, a lot of these things, we look at Dianetics from Scientology. That's about the reactive mind. That shit's true. The rest of the stuff in Scientology isn't, <laughs> but that is. And that's what I've, I've heard Kelly Teal say in other interviews. In the beginning of Nexium, there's stuff that works because it's based off of cognitive therapy. It's stuff that actually works. So there's a there's something that catches, that gets you. You go this, aha, I am fixing some of my issues. I am correcting some of my problems. So then you become indebted, right? So anyway, I would love to hear your questions down in the uh, comment section below. Again, if you, if you are not familiar with Nexium, if you are from another country and you've never heard of Nexium, most Americans have because it was like all over in the New York Times. It was everywhere. Um, please uh, research it. And then ask me any questions you want me to ask Kelly Teal because I'm so excited about her coming on. She's awesome. I, when I was talking to her on the phone, I felt like I was talking to a long lost friend. She's just like us. She's very much aware of spiritually of stuff. And so, and I love that about her. If I didn't say this before, you know, a lot of times people, when they come out of like these cult situations, they will run in the opposite direction of spirituality. They will become atheists. They will completely shut off any type of, of, of spiritual pursuit and i don't blame them i have i don't blame them i understand that when you've been heavily abused sometimes you need to cut everything off completely in order to heal yourself before you can even look at that stuff again and i think god understands as well you know i don't think god judges any of our our healing paths but kelly has maintained a hunger for spirituality and a hunger for the truth even though she is coming out of a high control cult and that's what i love about her is that she still maintained this 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 seeking of of spiritual knowledge and so i can't wait to talk to her and gersant I've spoken to both of them on the phone privately, but on the channel. And I cannot wait for you guys to hear what they have to say. Because again, this is such, this is so important. This stuff is like really important. The human mind, the human consciousness, the human psyche is, is some of the most valuable tools that we have. And it pisses me off that people abuse it. Um, and I'm hoping that the only way to combat, combat this is knowledge. I mean, knowledge is power and knowledge protects. All right, you guys. So, um, yeah, it'll be an interesting week full of really cool people on the channel. Again, just let me know whatever questions you have, and I will be glad to ask. I'll talk to you guys soon.